so much choir you know, at the midnight cry. Wow. How many of you are looking forward to the midnight cry? That, that cry getting sooner and sooner. It's sooner today than it was yesterday. Should it not come tonight, it'll be sooner tomorrow than it is today. At the midnight choir, if you have your copy of God's Word, I invite you to go ahead and be turning to the Old Testament book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 26, verses 1 through 4, as you're turning there. In between now and the midnight cry, we are still living here on this earth. And this earth, unfortunately, because of the fall and sin that was introduced way back in the Garden of Eden, the sin for which Jesus Christ came to die on the cross of Calvary, and by his blood we can be healed, we can be forgiven. In between then, and when Jesus comes again, we live on this earth, and this earth has sin. Indeed, the whole creation, as Romans tells us, is groaning under the weight of that sin, waiting for the redemption in the final midnight cry to come when Jesus Christ comes again. And so as we're here on this earth, we will experience in trials and tribulations. We will experience storms in life. I remember the first time that I heard this song by Ryan Stevenson came out in 2015, but I, I didn't really hear it, or maybe I listened, but I didn't really hear the words until March of 2016. In the eye of the storm, you remain in control, and in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. It was March of 2016, and uh, Chris Clevis, 29 years of age, probably the sweetest, most humble guy that you would ever meet, came up to about here on me. He had a shirt that said, I'm not short, I'm just fun-sized. That was Chris. Chris, from the moment he was born, though, experienced some health issues. He had a shunt put into his brain, and in March of 2016, that shunt began to malfunction such that he had to be transported up to Albuquerque to the hospital, about three and a half hours away from Alamogordo, where he lived. He was in the hospital for several weeks, touch and go. Uh, finally, we're able to get a new shunt put in and able to get released from the hospital. His parents picked him up. They were there. They were driving him back. Only about 30, 45 minutes outside of Albuquerque, Chris began to experience a severe headache that would not have been normal for the shunt. Instead of stopping and turning the car around and going back to the hospital, perhaps because they had spent so much time in the hospital, well, let's just get closer to home, and they proceeded to go home to Alamogordo. They were tired. Chris's brother, uh, Matt, he was tired. He, about my oldest son's age, Stephen, they were good friends, and uh, they decided that they would just take turns, the parents and Matt, in, in watching Chris overnight to see if he got any worse or if he just stabilized and, and got better. And the parents went to bed, and Matt was on duty that night, and Matt tried as he would, but uh, he just got tired and fell asleep. And sometime during the time where he fell asleep, Chris had a major cardiac event from which he never recovered and passed out of this world into the arms of a waiting Savior. And I heard that song and it just began to, to speak to me and to understand that maybe you'll never experience that exact type of storm of life. Maybe you'll never be quite in the eye of the storm that way but we'll all experience our own storms of life. Uh, this past week, uh, we had what for us, at least in recent time, was, was the perfect storm. Uh, this week, Brenda started a new job up at Evangel Christian School as, as a new teacher up there, and so she was getting her classroom ready and came back Tuesday complaining she didn't feel very well. Something's wrong, back, back not sure what it is. So we went to the doctor on Wednesday morning, sure enough, probably gallbladder, but we couldn't get in to see a, an ultrasound technician up in Woodbridge until later that night. And so we finally got up to the uh, place up in Woodbridge. And as the tech began to, to look at the ultrasound, you, you, know, you never want to see this look. You, you want to laugh, gallbladder. Now, as she kept doing the ultrasound, you could see her facial expression just was like, 
And then finally she said, no, I'm not a doctor, and I, I can't, and I don't even play one on TV. And we said, she didn't say that, really. But she says, I'm not a doctor. I'm not supposed to. I, but she said, you just might want to plan on hanging around. We knew what that meant. And so we went to urgent care, and about 4 in the morning, the ambulance took Brenda away to Virginia Hospital up in Arlington. I went back to, out to, to uh, Fredericksburg to try to get some sleep. And the next morning, Stephen was supposed to be down at Longwood between 9 and 12 to check in. Hard to be at two places at, at one time. On top of that, we thought, well, her brother could... Judy, Brenda's mom, had cataract surgery on Monday, another cataract surgery on Thursday. Perfect storm at just that time. But you know what? Through it all, God is. Not was, but God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Folks, in the midst of the storms of life, whether you just came out of one, whether you're in the midst of one, or whether you're getting ready to go into one that you don't even know that's coming, God is good. And in the midst of the storm, there can be God's perfect peace. Shalom, shalom. If you have your copy of God's Word and are able to stand this morning, I want to share perhaps one of my favorite, if not my favorite verse in all of Scripture is Isaiah 26.3. But we'll start with verse 1. Isaiah writes, in that day, this song, in, in, what day is he talking? He's really talking about what the choir sang about a moment ago. In, in the time of the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, when we're all in heaven, and when we're all finally redeemed from all of the sin that has taken place here on this world, we're able to sing a song. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He, and the he there is God, he sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. You, God, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord God, Yahweh, Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty is an everlasting rock. Father, we thank you this morning that your salvation is sure. We thank you that the peace which you promise in and through Jesus Christ he is steadfast. And Father, we thank you this morning that we can trust in you each and every day that you promise that you will be with us even at the very end of the age. Father, we pray this morning now that even in this time together that our hearts and minds would be open, that we would set aside distractions. Father, that we would repent of any sin which so easily entangles. And Father, we would keep our focus upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, as we run the race that is set before us, even as we encounter storms along the way. Uh, Father, speak, and might we hear, and might we put into practice all that you're calling us to do in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, folks, in the eye of the storm, there is perfect peace. There is perfect peace, shalom, shalom. Indeed, in verse 3, uh, the word perfect is not there. It's just a double shalom. In the Hebrew, shalom meaning peace. And so shalom, shalom. There is perfect peace, first of all, because our eternity is safe. Our eternity is safe. Look back in verse 1. We have a strong city. He's speaking of the end times. He's speaking of that new city of Jerusalem. He's speaking of that place where we will dwell on high with the most high God. We have a strong city, and he, the he there is God, he sets up salvation as walls and as bulwarks. In just a few weeks, we'll be starting a new series through the Old Testament book of Nehemiah. If you're familiar at all with Nehemiah, you understand that Nehemiah got word from his brethren in Jerusalem uh, that the walls that were around that city had been in disrepair, making it easy for the enemy to come in. And so Nehemiah would go back and he, along with his brethren, would rebuild the walls around the city of Jerusalem. Uh, understand, in this world, in this life, there will be times when the walls come tumbling down. There will be times when we need to have the walls repaired, whether that's individually, whether that's as a family, whether that's, yes, even as a church, there will be times when the walls are down. Even as a nation, Israel would experience that. And if you look at our own nation, you understand well that the walls, so to speak, spiritually speaking, are crumbled and badly in need of repair. That repair will come from none other must indeed come 
from the Lord God Almighty himself. Unless the Lord builds it, Psalm 127, unless the Lord is the one who rebuilds it, all who labor will labor in vain. It is the Lord who builds it. And ultimately, we can have perfect peace. Why? Because our eternity is safe. And our eternity is safe because the God of the universe holds us in his hand. He holds our life in his hand. He holds our eternity in his hand. We have a strong city. He sets up salvation as walls and bulwarks. Folks, he's the one that sets up salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. We don't do anything to save ourselves. Salvation is of God by grace through faith. Are we saved? That not of ourselves. What it is the gift of God. Not as a result of works lest anyone should boast. And folks, we have perfect peace even in the midst of of the storms of life because our eternity is safe. John 3.16, maybe one of the first verses that, that you learned, I, I, probably one of the first verses like, for God so loved the world that he gave what his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting or eternal life, right? When does everlasting or eternal life begin? There you go. It's not at the midnight cry. Oh, we, we'll realize fully, completely what that means. But you said it, eternal life, everlasting life begins the moment that we are born again into the family of God. We sing that, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Folks, once you're born into God's family, once you're reborn, spiritually speaking, you can never be unborn, spiritually speaking. You can only be born physically one time. And you can only be born again, spiritually speaking, one time. If you've truly been born again, you become part of God's family. Salvation is his to give in and through Jesus Christ. And once you're born again, he will never take that salvation away from you. For all of our sins, past, present, and future, are nailed to the cross and we bear them no more. We can say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Even in the midst of of the perfect storm of life, you can have perfect peace, shalom, shalom, knowing that your eternity is safe. And I say knowing because John tells us in his gospel, you can know that you know that you know. This morning, do you know that your eternity is safe? Do you know that your eternity is secure? Do you know that your salvation is eternally secure in the heavens if you doubt that go to God and receive that perfect peace knowing that we could not be saved by anything good that we have done and we can't be unsaved by anything bad that we have done once we're born again that's important do you be a church member you can call yourself a Christian and most Americans if they're surveyed will say that they are Christians it doesn't matter what we call ourselves if we're not born again. If we've never, as Brother Max said, if we've never stood and identified with Jesus Christ through his death, his burial, his resurrection, baptism is simply an outward expression of what's already taken place inside, that we've already been inwardly baptized, we've already become a new creation in Christ. And so this morning, you can know that you know that you know. And if there's any, just any slight doubt at all, Ask the Lord to resolve that even this morning, that you might be able to walk out of here with a perfect peace because your eternity is safe in the hands of Jesus, safe in the hands of God Almighty. There is a perfect peace because our eternity is safe, but second this morning, there is perfect peace because our trust is sure. Look back in verse 3. You, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. F folks, where is your trust this morning? Now, our trust can be in any number of things. But ultimately, because we live in a fallen world, and yes, as trustworthy as we may be, we are not 100% guaranteed. There's only one who you can trust every moment of every day, every month, 
every year, year in, and year out that will never fail you, that will never turn his back on you, that will always steer you in the right direction, that that is God Almighty and in true his son, Jesus Christ, who will always, always, always be trustworthy. Even when our faith fails, even when our faith wanes from time to time, even when we cry out, Lord, increase my faith. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Have you ever cried that cry? Lord, increase my faith because my faith is weak. God's faith is always strong. God's faith will never fail. But notice what Isaiah writes in, in verse 3. You keep him, God, you keep him in perfect peace, shalom, shalom. But here's the key, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I, I don't know about, I, I love Peter. Uh, Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 16, he asked, well, who are, who are people saying that I am? Who, who do all these people, some say Elijah the prophet, uh, and, you know, one of these, but who do you say that I am? And I love Peter's always there. He's either there with the right answer, he's there with the wrong answer. But he was, I got it, I got it. He was the horse shack of his day. Some of you will get that, some of you won't. I, I got, you, you're, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. That's right. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven, and I say, a Upon this rock, not, not Peter himself, but upon the rock of faith, that confession of faith that he just confessed, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That, that same old Peter, when Jesus was walking on the water, saw Jesus walking. He, he didn't want to wait for Jesus to get the boat. He's like, I'm getting out of the boat, and I'm going to walk to Jesus. Can you imagine? How many of you have ever walked on water? How many of you ever told somebody that you walked on water? No. Physically impossible. Laws of physics, and you just can't do that. But yet, Jesus walked on water. And here's old Peter. He, he's not God. Jesus, fully God, fully Matt. Here's Peter, fisherman. He had been on the water. He had been in a boat. He had caught a lot of fish. But I guarantee you, Peter had never gotten out of the boat in the middle of the sea and started to walk on the water until that day. He got, Peter, come on. And Peter got out of the boat. And Peter's looking right at Jesus. And Peter's doing good as he's looking right at Jesus. But you know, I don't know how long it was that Peter was walking on the water. I think it was probably a lot shorter than we think it was. And then all of a sudden, the wind started getting a little bit harder. Those white caps started kind of going over his feet. They're getting a little bit more. And before long, probably not too many moments, maybe even within, um, where's Peter's focus? Instead of right here on Jesus, it's, and as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, what happened to old Peter? He began to sing. He began to sing, and when he sang, when he, remember when he cried, Lord, save me! And Jesus reached out his hand, and Peter came back and got him in the boat. See, when we take our focus, when our mind is not stayed or focused on Jesus, everything around us, the distractions of life, the storms of life will begin to, to overwhelm us. And folks, there's not a single day that goes by that there's not some little strength. Maybe it, you see these, like, we call them dust devils, I, I think. I don't know if it's what they call them, right? You see these little dust devils just spin around. and just out of, Maybe it's just a small thing that just passes really quickly. But maybe it's just a major hurricane that has just come through your life. Maybe it's a tornado that has just ripped you apart. Folks, we, we've got storms of life that we go through. When we go through those storms of life, we can trust in Jesus. We can trust that he not only will be there with us, I will be with you always. The great I am, the one who spoke the world and the universe into existence, the great I am says, I will be with you. We can trust him. Our trust is sure. There's perfect peace because our trust is sure. There's perfect peace because our eternity is safe. But last but not least, there is perfect peace because our God is solid. Our God's solid. You ever hear somebody say, oh, that, that, that guy, he's solid. Hey, our, our, his word, it's solid. The greatest, most solidest, and I know that's not a word, the greatest, most solid guy or gal in the world that you would just, man, he, 
pales in comparison to God who is always 100% solid. See, in this life, there's, there's not a 100% guarantee except for God. When God says it, you can take it to the bank every single time. Not, a, not even ivory soap can say that, can it? 99 and 44, 100%, it's close. It floats. But it's not 100%. Our God is solid. A solid rock. He is the everlasting God. Uh, notice uh, what Isaiah says. And he puts this together. The Lord God, Yahweh God, Yahweh Jehovah, the Lord God, what is an everlasting rock. It's speaking of who he is. It's speaking of, of his character. It's speaking of how he interacts with us. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. And we're to build our life. We're to build the life of our families. We're to build the life of the church upon the solid rock of Jesus. Jesus himself puts it this way in Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27 as he's finishing up the Sermon on the Mount. When he says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There's only one everlasting rock. There is only one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is only one that we are instructed to build our life on. There is only one that the everlasting rock says, I will build the church on, and that's none other than Jesus Christ and Christ alone. This morning, as you're facing the storms of life, maybe even the perfect storm of life, what are you building on? Are you building today? Not what you built on yesterday because yesterday is gone. What are you building on today? Are you building on the solid rock of Jesus Christ? Not what you're going to build on tomorrow because you may never get tomorrow. But what are you building on today, right now? And maybe yesterday you were building on sinking sand. Maybe yesterday you were building on your own experiences. Maybe you were building on your own intellect. Maybe you are building on your job, your status, your money, your family, whatever you were building on. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the only thing that we can build on is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the solid rock. Not just a solid rock. He is the solid rock. What are you building your life on? This morning, Jesus says, if you want to experience that perfect peace, that peace that passes all understanding, that peace that guards your heart and your mind in and through Christ Jesus, that perfect peace comes through the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Build your life on the rock. Anything else will ultimately disappoint. You know, we sing this great hymn of the faith, the solid rock. You know, my hope is, and I'm not going to sing it, but my hope is built what on Nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. What On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Not too long ago, a, a new version of that that incorporated the solid rock came out known as Cornerstone. And it added uh, this chorus, Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the savior's love through the storm he is lord lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face i rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within the veil folks this morning whatever storm of life that you're experiencing Jesus Christ the solid rock Jesus Christ the almighty one Jesus Christ the great I am says I will be with you always even to the very end of the age this morning might you know that your salvation is saved your trust in him is secure and ultimately at the end of the day the peace that we have through him shalom shalom comes because you and i have built 
our life on nothing other than the solid rock of Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Until the midnight cry, today I, I stand. If we have tomorrow, I stand. Yesterday is past. Today is what's promised. Tomorrow we may, may not have. On Christ the solid rock, I stand. And the great I am, he will stand with me. And you will experience shalom, shalom, perfect peace in and through Christ. In the eye of the storm, there is perfect peace. Let's pray. Father God, thank you this morning that you have given us Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And Father, because of the peace that he gives, even in the midst of the storm, even in the eye of the storm, we can experience your perfect peace. Father, help us to keep our minds stayed focused upon you, fixed upon your son, Jesus Christ, empowered day by day through the Holy Spirit who's taken up residence in our life, the great I am who promises to be with us always, even the very end of the age. Father, I pray this morning, for anyone here who has never, by grace through faith, reached out their hand of faith to Jesus, allowed him to take hold of them, to save them, to experience the peace that only comes through Jesus as Savior and as Lord. Father, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that they would experience that salvation. Father, I pray your heart, you would open hearts and minds to draw them to the cross, to the empty tomb, to Jesus, to receive that peace, that forgiveness, that eternal, everlasting life that will never go away. For Christians this morning, maybe trying to do things in their own power, in their own skill, building their life not on the solid rock but on sinking sand, today is a new day. Say, Lord, help me to, to build my life. Help me to build my, my future. Help me to build on you, on, on Jesus Christ. And this morning you simply may need to come and say, God, I, I trust you. In, in the midst of life storms, I, I trust you. Your promises are true. Your character is true. I, I'll build my life on the solid rock. This morning maybe you simply need to come and say, Lord, help me to, to build. If I, if I build without you, I just simply labor in, in vain. Help me not to labor in vain anymore. As your spirit moves this morning, Father, as we respond to your invitation, it is your invitation. And Father, might we have heard and might we put into practice right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand together as we sing uh, this great song. We, we began to learn it last week based on Psalm 51. Whatever it is that you need to surrender, maybe it's you need to surrender your life to, to Jesus, the Savior and Lord. Maybe it's you just need to surrender the control of your life, and you've been in the pilot's seat, and you need to just simply step over and to be the co-pilot and let Jesus have his rightful place. Whatever it is, some of our deacons will be at the back for prayer. The altars are open. I'll be here at the front as God moves you come.
it is that we need to surrender to lay down at the foot of the cross and might we do that for some it might mean salvation for others it might be as mason and stephanie did this morning to follow the lord jesus christ in believers baptism take that very first step of obedience in the christian life and say i, I want to take my stand for jesus stephanie mason you come and uh, max uh, got some certificates and bibles that we'd like to present uh, to you this morning ma'am bless you so much Step through the church like what we call certificate of baptism. Step through the church like you would a baptism. Amen. In obedience to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Mason, you're going to get this Bible for us and write us off with it. Be a faithful and obedient to the Lord. They'll be up here. You want to come by and let them know you'll be praying for them in the days ahead as God continues to work in their life. And this week, wherever our feet might take us, uh, might we lift up his name. And might we experience, because of him, might we experience his perfect peace, his shalom, shalom in our life. Thank you for being here this morning, being a part of what God continues to do in and through the people known as Ramoth Baptist Church. As we dismiss this morning, take the hand of the person standing beside you, Brother Greg. You come lead us in our closing word of prayer. And Pastor Chuck, lead us in our closing song this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have made for us to enjoy. We especially thank you for Jesus who came on the earth to die and forgive our sins, Lord, and was risen on the third day. We pray for the two individuals, brother and sister in Christ, who are baptized today, Lord, that you bring blessings, love, and peace. And help them grow closer to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus and pray and praise him in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.